everyone, welcome to my sewing room. I wanted to give you a little tour of my new sewing space. We just moved um, one year ago and so I finally got the space organized and set up and it's clean right now. So I figured I would show you around. So come with me. So we'll start over here. This is where I keep my machines and um, everything that I use while actually sewing. So this is my industrial machine. I have a Juki DNU 1451S. Um, this is what I make my bags, my vinyl things, leather, that kind of stuff on because it's heavy duty as you can see. And then back here, so you can see well enough, I've got a serger for working with knit fabrics. And then I have my regular sewing machine that I do all the other stuff with, which is a Singer Quantum Stylus 9960. I've had this for quite a while, I really like it. It's got a ton of stitches, which obviously I don't really use, but they're fun if you need them. Um, and it's just been a really good machine. This machine, a lot of people don't like Singer, but this one actually is has metal parts, so it's a really good machine. And I've sewn through very thick layers with it. Behind there is where I keep all my little um, attachments and things that I need for projects. So I have things like, um, my handmade labels for bags. I've got all different needles. So I've got each one labeled ballpoint needles, my double needles, my industrial machine needles. Those are all in here. And then I have things that I add to my bags and stuff like buttons or fancy tassels, key rings, um, rectangle rings, sliders. All of that stuff is here. So if I need to add something, I can just easily grab it. Um, and then hidden under here I have a cover stitch, but if I'm being honest, I haven't mastered that yet, so I don't use it too often. It's been giving me problems. I need to problem troubleshoot that. Um, up here I have more supplies, oil for my industrial machine. Um, these are my extra feet for my sewing machine. Then I have my threads up here for different colors. I have some double-sided tape. My lamp, because you always need a ton of light. Um, I keep my scissors up here, my bobbins up here. When they're empty, they go up, and then I can refill them. Um, and just some different tools that I use while I'm sewing over there. I also have this gamer's chair. So this, um, a lot of gamers use this, but it's actually really comfortable for sewing. So if you need a new sewing chair, that's a tip. Then behind me, because you're always turning to iron while you sew. I have my ironing mat and my iron. This pink machine back here is a snap and rivet press. Um, and then this desk under here has all the extra supplies that I need. Can you see it? Um, when I'm sewing. So it's got, it's got my, uh, my attachments for my press over there. And then I've got all sorts of tools. My thread, um, Seam ripper and screwdrivers and marking tools, rulers, and I also have more um, attachments for bags and things like that, tassel ta tops, and zippers, a couple drawers worth of zippers. This is my zipper tape. If you've never used zipper tape, you should look into that for sure. So lots of different colors of zipper tape. And then the bottom one have extra thread and elastic. Um, I have a little attachment that goes on my vacuum. And this, if you don't have one of these, you can get them on Amazon for like, I don't know, 10 to $15. They are like a little vacuum attachment and you can suction out all that extra lint and everything out of your sewing machine. Because you want to keep that out of your machine to keep it running well. So I keep that down there. And then hidden underneath I have... Well, I always keep a trash around, but I have a box with my industrial threads and a box with my serger threads. So I have a bunch of different colors for those. So that's kind of where I sit down and sew. Next to that is my wall of fabric. Um, I have a lot of fabric. It's busting through my doors, but I keep a lot of my, like, children. So I have two different shops. I have Charmed by Reese Pieces, which is a children's clothing shop and then I have Reese pieces which is like um, bags and wallets and accessories so 
This is a lot of my knit fabrics that I use for my kids' shop. I then make swaddle blankets and clothing and stuff. So that's what this is. That's for that shop. And then next to that I have quilts and cottons that I use for bag making or anything else that I want. Um, some different fabrics I use for lining my bags. I also have a little bit of leather. Up above, I got these storage bins from Michaels. These are um, for like scrapbooking, but they're pretty nice. They're like 12 by 12 or so, and they're really big. And I keep my pattern, which I keep my patterns in these plastic file folders things. And then I can keep the pieces over here. This one's a little messy. And then I put the actual directions right here. But um, when I cut, my fabric, I keep all the cut pieces in here. This is multiple, not just one projects. And then I keep the directions with it. And that way it's all ready. And when I'm done cutting, I can sew because I usually uh, bulk, bulk cut things. So I'll cut multiple of the same thing, put them in there. And then when I'm ready to sew, I grab the box and take it over and everything's all together. So that's what that is. Um, this is a binder for my clothing patterns that I've purchased. So I have them all on my computer. I, I have some printed too, but I didn't want to print everything because I use a projector now. Um, so this just is like a cover photo so that I know which patterns I have and I can think, oh, I want to make my kids a sweatshirt and I can look through and see which ones I have. So I do that and then I keep the main patterns on my computer because like I said, I use a projector, which I probably won't show you, but it's on the ceiling back there and it projects an image down so that I can actually just cut it without having a pat paper pattern. So that's nice. Um, continuing on my wall of fabric, I've got different bins here labeled. I've got knit, more knits. These are like my personal knit fabrics for my own clothing that I'm um, making. So I've got all different kinds. I've got specialty vinyls. These are what I do um, make bags and wallets and things out of. I have tons of different colors and fun specialty vinyls in multiple drawers. Um, then I have other fabrics, just utility fabrics, things for curtains, netting, you name it. I also always keep a scrap box. So this is my knit scrap box. So any knit fabrics go in here. I also have a like cotton woven scrap box in another area. And then in the next one over is again, more my personal fabric. So my business fabrics are on that side, personal fabrics are over here. So I have a ton of different knits and um, yeah, things like that. So I have a lot of sewing to do and not a lot of time to do it in. Does anybody else collect fabric? I'm pretty sure anybody who sews is also a fabric collector. Um, then down in this basket is where I have some other specialty stuff. I have my rolls of vinyl, not vinyl, um, cork. My rolls of cork, and I have a few things of leather, and I actually do have a couple large um, vinyl things down there. So that's in that corner. And then if you swoop back over here with me, in the middle of the room is my cutting table. Um, this is actually two Ikea uh, cube, what do they call those? I think they're like calyx or cal something. <laughs> they're the, from Ikea. And then I got, each one has six um, of these caster, caster wheels. And then I got the tabletop. So these are also from Ikea. So I had my husband screw the tabletop onto the storage and then put the wheels on the bottom so that they actually can roll. So I can move this around. Um, and I'll often take this this whole thing and just roll it out the door into my living room um, when my boys are playing or and just cut out there. So but I can put it together and have a nice big area also. Um, and then I have these bins again like I had on the back wall that are also from IKEA. And this is where I keep my patterns that I've already printed. So this one has my women's patterns. I keep them in these, what are these, like 9 by 13-ish um, file folder envelope things. <laughs> um, and then I just put the picture on the front and then I put all my pieces inside. So that's how 
I store my patterns and my ones for women and kids, ones for my business. Um, this is my cotton scraps. I told you I have a few different bins for scraps. This one is for like the cotton wool bins. Um, so yeah, so that's on this side. And then if you come around to this side, this I have more storage. So um, this top bin are more patterns. So these are uh, my bag patterns. So bag patterns I store one of two ways. Either that's kind of a messy example. Um, so like some of my new ones that I haven't tried yet, I'll just put a, uh, I'll spiral bind it and then I'll just keep the pieces in. And then if I know that I like it, I will move it into a folder like this where I keep the pieces together and then all the pages are in a clear plastic cover, whatever. I can't think of words. <laughs> So this is how I'll store once I know I like the pattern. So these are my bag patterns specifically in here. And then I also have some acrylic templates. These are for patterns that I cut a lot. Um, then I can just take a rotary cutter and go along the edge and it's really quick. So I have a few of those. On the top is more um, specialty fabric. This is waterproof canvas. And I've started lining a lot of my bags with that. I also use it for like tote bags and things. And then more vinyl colors. Um, so the other vinyl I showed you is like specialty colors. These are kind of your classic colors. They're not sparkles or anything like that. And then next to it is kind of messy. Um, I keep a roll of this medical paper. This is like the stuff that they put on your um, the bed in, in a doctor's office. And I use this to trace patterns. So if I have a pattern I like, um, and I want to cut it in three different sizes, I can trace this and cut the pattern, um, and then I don't destroy the whole pattern. I also have all sorts of different interfacings and foams and that kind of sign of thing. Then I have two drawers, one with these little tiles from Home Depot, and you can use these as pattern weights, so you just can set your pattern on top of your fabric, and then that will hold them down. And then I have another drawer, which is hard to see because it's underneath, but this is just got a basket in it and I hold things like marking tools um, and my cutting supplies. Everything that I need at my cutting counter is right here. Um, easy to grab and access. And then over this way, we're almost done. Because I run a business, this is kind of my shipping station. So a lot of you just who just have regular sewing room won't have this, but this is my shipping station. This is where I keep most, a lot of my completed items, the smaller ones, so like wallets and things. Um, I've got, you know, different zipper on wallets and my um, pork products are organized in here so that I can just grab and package. And then underneath I've got my packing inserts and in my drawers I have things like poly mailers and tissue paper so that I can easily package up all my items. See down below is more more shipping stuff. And then I've got um, some holiday cards and things so I can add stuff during the holiday time and I've got a paper cutter down here. This next side is more labels and things. So my um, charmed by Reese pieces, I have labels for that. I also do live shows where I show you like the newest bags and things that I've made and answer questions and just chat. So I have a, a, some different tools in here that I will use during live shows. Um, I've got like my spinner for prizes and things like that. So if you ever want to join a live show, you can go over to my Facebook page, um, Reese Pieces. So facebook.com slash Reese Pieces, R-E-I-S-P-E-I-C-E-S-S. Um, and then you'll see live events there. Then down below, I have photo props. So all kinds of different things that I use in my photos when I list my items. Um, so that is this. I've got my shipping label printer. I used to cut them out, regular printer paper, and tape them down. 
is so much nicer. So if you do have some kind of business where you're shipping and you don't have a Dymo shipping labor maker, you should definitely get on that train. Um, and then more stuff for shipping here. I've got business cards and free little gifts that I include in my orders. Um, I've got a scale for weighing and more packaging. Um, I also have labels and packaging inserts. So that, like I said, that's my shipping area. And the final thing, I'll show you a quick peek. It's not super pretty. Let's see. This is like the rest of my finished items. So I also do local shows, so you'll find like storage bins. I have to have all my stuff for my shows. And then this is where I keep like the bags and bigger finished items um, that I've completed. And I have kids clothes down here in drawers and up here that I've worked on, little booties, little moccasins that I've made, um, all the pants and everything get folded and put in these drawers. And yeah, I think that's about it. So that is a tour of my sewing room and my little studio. And I definitely did not start this way, so don't feel bad if you're in a small space or you're working at your dining room table. There's plenty of others people like that and I didn't start like this. This was a progression over time. So. For more information, I have a website uh, which is just reesepieces.com, R-E-I-S-P-E-I-C-E-S. -E -E and I have all my bags and everything listed there. Um, you can also contact me if you have questions. And also, if you are a new sewer, I am starting a beginner's sewer class. Beginner sewing class. Um, it's going to be Reese Pieces Sewing Academy, and it will walk you through step by step from the very beginning of picking out a machine all the way through setting up your sewing space, the tools you need, um, to different threads and fabrics and everything you will need to know as a beginner sewer. So if you've just started looking into sewing or just started sewing, you can definitely check out my website. Um, I have a free troubleshooting guide there as well if you want to sign up. So if you're getting knots under your fabric when you're sewing and just having a lot of issues, then hopefully I can help you out. All right, thanks so much for joining me. Bye.